My name is Megan Ross and I'm studying a Bachelor of Psychology at Monash University. I was on the BC Honor of Psychology and today we're going to be talking about the different regions of the brain associated with memory. So in this video we're going to do a recap on the different types of memory and then we're going to go through the four key areas being the cerebral cortex, the hippocampus, the amygdala as well as the cerebellum. So to do our recap on the different types of memory, to start off with, we have explicit memories, which are also known as declarative memories. For the purpose of this video, I am going to go by explicit memories, just so we don't get confused. Um, so this refers to memories that occurs when information can be consciously or intentionally recalled. So this is information when you think about it, right? There are two different types. So we have episodic memory. So this is the memory of personally experienced events. So think about what you're doing right now. This will be an episodic memory because you're seeing your desk in front of you, your laptop, your phone, all of those kinds of things. And also like your first day of school is an episodic memory. So episodic meaning episode, so episode of your life. Next we have semantic memories. So this is the memory of facts and knowledge of the world. Um, so knowing what a semantic memory is, is a semantic memory. Any definitions you can think of, semantic memories, how many um, sides are there to a square? Semantic memory. What color of the sky? We also have implicit memories. So this is the memory that does not require conscious retrieval. Um, so this is the opposite to explicit memory. So get it? Explicit, implicit, they're opposite of each other. And an example of this is procedural memory. So this is the memory of how to do things. Now an example that is not on here as well is also classically conditioned memories. As we know, they are unconscious responses. Um, so that's why they fall in the implicit category. Now moving on to the sections of the brain, we're looking at the cerebral cortex. Um, and if we look at this diagram here, we can see that the cerebral cortex is this pink layer here. Now you may have learned about this previously as it includes like the prefrontal cortex, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, occipital lobe, all those kinds of things. But now we're looking at it in a different light. So this um, cerebral cortex stores long-term explicit semantic and episodic memories. So long-term, thinking about duration and capacity, so potentially unlimited amount for an unlimited amount of time, explicit, so conscious memories, and this stores knowledge as well as like our episodes of our life. Now moving on to the next section, which is the hippocampus. Now looking at the diagram, we can see it is this part here, and it's connected to the amygdala. We'll get into that kind of relationship when we look at the amygdala, but it's good to be aware of that. Now knowing where these are in the brain isn't um, something we need to know for the exam, but I just thought it would help you provide some context. So the hippocampus turns short-term memories into long-term memories. So this increases the duration and capacity because thinking back to the capacity of short-term memory, we can only hold five to, uh, sorry, five to nine things and we can only hold it for 18 to 20 seconds and then compare that to potentially unlimited for an unlimited amount of time. So it plays a critical role in the consolidation of new semantic and episodic memories. Um, so it is really turning these short-term memories into long-term memories making strong neural pathways for our conscious types of memory. So our explicit memory, so semantic and episodic. And it transfers these memories to the cerebral cortex, the storage. It also plays a role in spatial memory. So this is an explicit memory of the physical locations of objects in space. Now moving on to the next one, we have the amygdala, which we knew before, which is connected to the um, hippocampus. So this is for processing and regulating emotional responses and plays an especially big role in fear and anger. So how is this connected to memory? Well, it plays a strong role in emotional memories. Um, it also plays a huge role in implicit memory, such as classically conditioned fear responses. So to go through how this works, when we get stressed, you release adrenaline, and this causes noradrenaline to build up in the amygdala, and then this tells the hippocampus to encode the emotional significance of the implicit memory. So you come across a snake, your body reduces adrenaline, which then triggers noradrenaline to build up in your brain in the amygdala. And then that annoys the hippocampus going, hey, we need this um, event is emotionally significant. Please put this in the memory. So now when we think of this encounter with the snake, we um, remember the fear response we had. Now moving on to the last area of the brain, we have the cerebellum. Looking at this diagram, it is this bit here. It's called some funny names, like people say it's like a small brain, all those kinds of things. Its main role is to coordinate fine movement as well as regulate posture and balance. It also plays a huge role in voluntary movement. So how is this related to memory? Well, it encodes and temporarily stores information relating to procedural memories. So as we can see, um, it plays a huge role in our movement and our balance. So it kind of makes sense that it would be related to our memories of this. So yeah, it temporarily stores it before it is moved into the um, cerebral cortex, but it really plays a huge role in encoding. It also plays a big role in the formation and storage of implicit memories of classical conditioning. 
So um, that'll also be related to our fear responses and stuff like that. And it also plays a big role um, to our spatial learning. It contributes to that as well with the hippocampus. Now, hopefully this has helped you to understand these four areas of the brain, as well as give you a quick recap on the different types of memory.